Tonight, the one night of year where the walls of justice are brought down with extreme force to allow the hounds to roam free with no rules, no restrictions, no barricades, no authority, and absolutely anything and everything will happen. A friendship betrayed by greed and anger will now lead to the fight of all fights anywhere where the road takes them. A chance to be recognized as the best of the best brings three individuals to one scourging halt, only to be passed through competitive warfare. Two bulls let free from their cages with no holds barred and physical combat and courage. A prestigious title held between two all-around athletes ready to barter everything at the table in exchange for their ultimate prize. Five men enter a battleground with the knowledge of only one of them being able to walk away standing. They will push their limits, fight as if their lives depend on it, and throw caution in the wind, all for the opportunity to be called a champion. Tonight, anything goes. There are no boundaries to what these men and women will do to succeed. On this night, on this land, anything can happen. Everything will. It's time to let the chains off, and it's time for things to get extreme. And now, WWE presents Extreme Rules. It's the one night of year where WWE goes extreme. Welcome inside a sold out Climate Pledge Arena in Seattle, Washington. Five championships will be decided. There will be no holds barred. Falls count anywhere. Tables, ladders, and so much more here tonight as WWE welcomes you to Extreme Rules. And we kick things off tonight with a man who has been steering a rocky ship as of late, the Messiah of the WWE, Seth freaking Rollins, has suffered numerous big match defeats in recent history, but tonight he's looking to bounce back in a huge way by spoiling the return of the whole damn show, Rob Van Dam, to kick us off. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring, accompanied by Murphy from Davenport, Iowa. Weighing in at 217 pounds, Seth Rollins. Over the last number of months, Seth Rollins was involved in warfare with one Mustafa Ali. That rivalry came to a head at SummerSlam, where Ali wrote the final chapter in that book defeating Seth Rollins inside the steel cage. But after numerous losses to Mustafa Ali, Seth Rollins has found himself in deep waters of losses after losses. Rollins over the last summer of weeks has been trying to bounce back, trying to regain momentum. And when the news broke that Rob Van Dam would be returning to the WWE here tonight, Seth Rollins saw the opportunity to come back in a big way to spoil the return of RVD here at Extreme Rules and make a name for himself once more. Seth Rollins, one of the biggest superstars in the WWE, but this is a what have you done for me lately business, and nothing for Seth Rollins has gone his way in the last number of months. But Seth Rollins has got his hands full tonight. Because it is the return of the whole damn show. And his opponent from Battle Creek, Michigan, Weighing in at 235 pounds, Rob Van Dam. For the first time since 2014, Rob Van Dam is set to step foot inside a WWE ring. A former WWE World Heavyweight Champion, a former Extreme Championship Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion. A former ECW television champion, a former Intercontinental champion, multiple time tag team champion, Mr. Money in the Bank winner. RVD has had a decorated career inside the confines of a WWE ring and elsewhere. And tonight, he is officially back under the WWE banner. And what a fitting evening for RVD to make his return on a show that was originally once an ECW branded pay-per-view way back when. Extreme rules. Some words that RVD knows a lot about. Well, let's see what if he can get it done in his return match. Or will the moment be too big 
for the whole damn show as we kick off Extreme Rules here tonight from Seattle. At RVD right off the bat, springboard, Moonsault taking down the Messiah. And of course, Rollins with his disciple Murphy in his corner here tonight. Murphy and Rollins, it seemed like they had a few issues leading up to SummerSlam. Rollins wasn't accompanying Murphy to the ring, or I should say vice versa. The two are having separate entrances for quite a bit in some of their matches alongside each other. But seemingly are back on the same page, and Murphy is once again in the corner of his leader here tonight. As he has been the last number of weeks, of course, the last time we saw Seth Rollins in action was a couple of weeks ago on Monday Night Raw. He picked up the big-time victory over the King of Strong Style, Shinsuke Nakamura. But Rollins knew it's going to take a couple of big wins, especially here on pay-per-view, to get back into the eye of the, the audience and the management here in the WWE. We know what Rollins wants. He wants his hand raised. He wants the big moment. He wants championship opportunities. But after loss after loss over the summer to Mustafa Ali, Rollins has really fell down the totem pole here in the WWE. And win after win is what's going to get Seth Rollins back to the promised land. It started a few weeks ago and gets Nakamura, and it's got to continue here tonight against the returning Rob Van Dam. And how awesome is it that RVD is in there right now, here in Seattle, back in the WWE. We mentioned all of RVD's accolades and so many more throughout his legendary career. And even at his age, what incredible shape the whole damn show is in. Look at that, split-legged moonsault. And Rollins, it seemed like he had it scouted there for a moment, was trying to roll out the way. RVD landed on the back though, now he's heading up to the top. Rollins is dazed and RVD went for the kick there. Unfortunately, had a little bit misscouted. Now Seth Rollins going to take advantage of the situation. RVD, he's been in big time moments, big time matches under the bright lights before, but again, this is his first time in WWE since 2014. Nearly eight years away for the whole damn show. On a night like tonight, the Extreme Rules pay-per-view, such a stacked card, and what a monumental night it's going to be here in Seattle. Will the pressure of the return get to Rob Van Dam here tonight? He can kind of flip the script and say, well, the pressure of trying to secure that big-time victory for Seth Rollins be what actually crumbles him in a possible defeat. Only time will tell as RVD and Seth Rollins are battling it out here, kicking us off live from Seattle, Washington. I'm going to thank everybody for joining us here tonight thus far. Again, five championships to be decided here tonight, including the five-man elimination challenge for the WWE Championship in our main event. A matchup that is going to be, of course, it is the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. Things are going to get extreme in that very ring here this evening. As Rollins in a very familiar situation, RVD pulling out the classics here tonight. Rolling thunder on the Messiah, and Rollins gets the shoulder up. And RVD heading to the top rope. Could be going for that five-star. Rollins, I think, knew it could have been coming. See how fast he got to his feet here, try to avoid... RVD's best finishing maneuver. As look at this, ripcord knee. Man, just knocked out the whole damn show. Rollins into the cover. RVD gets the shoulder up. Smelled the sense of urgency through Seth Rollins throughout this contest. You saw how fast he got to his feet when RVD once again was approaching the top rope. And Rollins is down. RVD's back up top. Five star frog splash. Into the cover goes Van Dam. And just like that, in his return, Rob Van Dam picks up the victory here tonight. Seth Rollins is not going to be happy about this one. He may have just got the wind knocked out of him, a couple of broken rib ribs along the way. But Seth Rollins is going to have to deal with the fact that once again, his hand is not getting raised inside of that ring here tonight. The five-star frog splash seals the deal in Seattle, Washington, live on pay-per-view. Here is your winner, Rob You want to talk about an emphatic return? Look no further. Then the whole damn show, Rob Van Dam, coming out swinging here tonight. What a victory. In just a number of minutes over Seth Rollins. Making quick work of the Messiah. RVD showing off his skills. And definitely sending a message to the rest of the WWE locker room that the whole damn show is back in action. 
What a way to kick things off here from Seattle at Extreme Rules. And we are set to roll on here at Extreme Rules. And for the first time tonight, things are truly going to get extreme. It is no holds barred in this next contest. The Celtic Warrior, the Scottish Psychopath. This thing has been brewing for quite a bit. And these two bulls are set to come to blows right here, right now. The following contest is a no holds barred match. Making his way to the ring from Dublin, Ireland. Weighing in at 267 pounds, the Celtic Warrior, Sheamus! This whole thing begun between Sheamus and Drew McIntyre a number of months ago when the Intercontinental Championship was still around the waist of the Celtic Warrior. Sheamus defeated Drew McIntyre back at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view on May the 2nd. However, their story continued into the SummerSlam event where the two men, along with the now Intercontinental Champion, the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne, met in a triple threat matchup. Sheamus lost the title, of course, on that evening when Pete Dunne pinned Drew McIntyre. Sheamus, of course, eventually going to have his eyes on Pete Dunne and the Intercontinental Championship, but the Celtic Warrior has made it clear he wants Drew McIntyre out of his way before he sets his sights on the Intercontinental Gold yet again. The Celtic Warrior is looking for payback, but the Scottish Psychopath has the same vision in mind. After Sheamus cost him a victory over Finn Balor a couple of weeks ago, we see where Finn Balor has ended up tonight. A shot at the Intercontinental Championship. That could have been Drew McIntyre. Sheamus wants payback. McIntyre wants the same. And tonight it's no holds barred between these two very familiar fellows. As we mentioned, after SummerSlam a couple of weeks ago on Monday Night Raw, Drew McIntyre met the Prince Finn Balor inside of that very ring. And thanks to the aid of the Celtic Warrior Sheamus, Finn Balor picked up the win on that night. And as we mentioned, later this evening, Finn Balor's got himself an Intercontinental Championship matchup against Pete Dunne. You never know if the roles were reversed and Drew McIntyre won that contest. It very well may have been the Scottish Psychopath getting that championship opportunity here tonight. You'll never really know, but we do know that these two men got a score to settle with each other. Old friends, very familiar foes, and it's time to settle the score here in Seattle. No holds barred. The bell has rung, and we are going at it between Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. And Sheamus immediately coming out swinging here. And the king of Claymore country, Drew McIntyre. Again, this for Sheamus is just about getting retribution. And not just about the retribution, but about getting Drew McIntyre out of his field of vision. Sheamus wants to refocus on getting the gold back around his waist. He worked so hard to achieve that goal of becoming the Intercontinental Champion. It was the final championship that Sheamus needed to hold in the WWE to become a Grand Slam Champion. Sheamus, of course, won that title back at the Backlash pay-per-view and had quite the lengthy reign with it, but as we can see, Sheamus taking things to the outside and a Celtic Warrior Kendo shot over the head. May have just woke it up, Drew McIntyre, and a headbutt to the back. But this is the danger of no holds barred. Things are going to spill out to the outside here, and there's, of course, no count outs, no disqualifications in this one. This match only ends by pinfall or submission. I'm sure for these two men, the Claymore kick versus the Bro kick, I'm sure that one or the other would just love to knock their opponents out for the victory. As things are brawling around. Here at ringside right now in Seattle, Washington. Sheamus with the beatdown over McIntyre. Drew McIntyre looking to get with a similar motive to Sheamus, looking to get Sheamus out of his hindsight. We've talked about McIntyre in recent history not being able to truly win that big one. Over the last number of months, a lot of big-time opportunities have slipped by the Scottish psychopath. We date back all the way to April when Drew McIntyre came up short in that number one contenders tournament for the WWE Championship. That's kind of where things all started for Drew McIntyre. And then just a week later, 
from that match on Monday Night Raw. McIntyre lost a Money in the Bank qualifier for returning Rated R Superstar Edge. And hell, look where Edge is now. He cashed in that Money in the Bank briefcase to become the WWE Champion. We're going to see him in action later tonight with the gold on the line. McIntyre faced Sheamus, as we mentioned, at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view two months ago. For the Intercontinental Championship, unfortunately coming up short in that contest. And of course, at SummerSlam, McIntyre took the loss and the pinfall in the triple threat matchup. So McIntyre staying afloat and has been earning those opportunities on main event and on Monday Night Raw. But when it comes to the pay-per-views and when it comes to these big-time opportunities, McIntyre just has been able to secure those victories. So I'm sure for Drew McIntyre tonight, he looks at this matchup against Sheamus in that same light. And really wants to get back into the swing of things there. And talking about the swing of things, McIntyre just, oh my goodness, breaking the kendo stick over the back of the Celtic Warrior Sheamus. You want to talk about being fired up? Look no further than the Scottish psychopath here tonight as the beatdown has commenced on the Celtic Warrior. Just snatching that kendo stick out of the hand of Sheamus. First one to the gut, then breaking it over the back. Drew McIntyre with a point to prove here tonight at Extreme Rules. McIntyre's down. Sheamus has been the aggressor when it comes to the weapons in this contest. He was the one who initiated that kendo stick. Now back out to the outside. And it looks like he's got a steel chair in hand. But McIntyre coming to get him some of the Celtic Warrior. And Sheamus obviously with a motive here tonight. Use the weapons. Beat down Drew McIntyre. And even though this is a no-holds-barred match, you know the pride that Drew McIntyre takes in the fight. He's probably thinking he doesn't even need the weapons to put a number on Sheamus. As you just saw right there with that reverse Alabama on Sheamus. Sheamus eating the canvas face first. Could have been a knockout blow that secured Drew McIntyre the victory. Not just yet, but McIntyre looking to follow up. Future Shock DDT. A signature maneuver. That has won Drew McIntyre championships in the past, but McIntyre here looking to keep the fight going still over Sheamus. Future Shock DDT. Oh, McIntyre could have been going for a second one, shoving Sheamus off there. But Sheamus now trying to take the momentum back in this contest. Has got Drew McIntyre over his head, and only so many people are going to be able to hold Drew McIntyre up and drop him on the top rope like that. The Celtic Warrior, certainly one of them. These two men just know each other so well. Old friends that have battled so many times inside of this ring over the years. And this is just the latest chapter. And what, let's be honest, will probably be a forever rivalry between Drew McIntyre and Sheamus. Some of the best opponents for each other have been each other over the last number of years. And this leads to a very exciting contest between the two. Another one that is taking place right before our eyes right now in Seattle. Sheamus, oh, whips Drew McIntyre off, pulls him back. And just a grueling backbreaker on the knee by the Celtic Warrior. McIntyre's down. Sheamus once again heading to the outside of the ring here. And it looks like he's pulling out yet another kendo stick. Sheamus continuing to be the aggressor with the no-holds-barred. Stipulation in this match is McIntyre eats the kendo stick right out of the forehead. Oh, man, just woke it up, the Scottish psychopath here. Pick it up, Sheamus, over the head. And a shoulder breaker right down to the canvas. And McIntyre's feeling it here. He's got to keep the aggression going on Sheamus here, especially, remember we talked about a few minutes ago, McIntyre's really been searching for that big-time moment over the last couple of months. And McIntyre catching Sheamus slipping. A headbutt may have been a knockout blow. But if that didn't do it, this may will. McIntyre's item up. Claymore kick. And you can probably count to 20 on that one. And oh, Sheamus gets the shoulder up. Sheamus getting the shoulder up at the very last second. McIntyre throwing his best trick at Sheamus here tonight. But the Irish man with the hard head waking up quickly there. Able to get the shoulder off the canvas at 2.9. And McIntyre's day, Sheamus is heading back up to the top rope. And the axe hammer, simple but effective, on Drew McIntyre. And this matchup has been a bruiser. These guys beating the hell out of each other. I can't believe Sheamus just survived that Claymore kick. And Sheamus now heads back to the outside. You remember earlier in the contest, 
He pulled out that steel chair. McIntyre fell into the trap and may have just gotten knocked out cold under the lights here at Seattle with that steel chair. McIntyre trying to drag himself back into the ring. Sheamus trying to go for the chair again. McIntyre dodges it. And a Sheamus with an A. First the chair shot, then that bicycle knee. Those are going to start adding up eventually for the psychopath. McIntyre knows that. Trying to avoid the steel chair at all costs. Now it goes behind on Sheamus. STO brings him down to the canvas. And this is where you see the Scottish psychopath kick into that next gear. Beating down on Sheamus. Into the cover. And Sheamus again gets the shoulder off the canvas. And McIntyre wants this win, and he wants it bad here tonight. A couple of near falls in the Celtic Warrior. Not just yet, though. Sheamus going for something. McIntyre able to counter. Another kick there, and Sheamus is maybe in trouble here. McIntyre's really starting to build momentum. And look at this, muscling up the Celtic Warrior, and a powerbomb down on the canvas below. And Sheamus cuts him off yet again with the bicycle knee. And Sheamus... He better keep his eye on his opponent, McIntyre. Tripping Sheamus up with the momentum going back and forth here. Now sits out with that, and Sheamus. Sheamus pops up. McIntyre again grabs a hold, just trying to keep his opponent down, and just drops him from the wayside right there. Sheamus' days, McIntyre's back in the corner. Claymore, kick number two. Sheamus' lights may be turned out for good, and Drew McIntyre picks up the victory here tonight. A bruising fight between these two warriors. No holds barred. Absolutely played a factor in this contest. The steel chair, multiple kendo sticks, but McIntyre proven no matter the stipulation. He brought the right tools to the job and was able to get it done here this evening. Two Claymore kicks is the exclamation point for the victory. Here is your winner, Drew McIntyre. And after the last number of months of defeat for Drew McIntyre, that was certainly a big win that's going to send the Scottish psychopath back on the track that we all believe he should be on. I'm sure Sheamus is going to live to fight another day. This rivalry may never end, but as for tonight, Drew McIntyre is your victor. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. The first of five championships set to be defended here tonight at Extreme Rules. First up, the prestigious gold. That is the Intercontinental Championship of the World. And your challenger here tonight, the Prince Finn Balor. A former multiple time Intercontinental Champion, a former NXT Champion, a former Universal Champion, and this man is looking to continue to add to his list of accolades here tonight, live on pay-per-view. Finn Balor very familiar with Extreme Rules as he stepped inside the confines of this matchup back at SummerSlam against Jeff Hardy that really propelled Finn Balor on this journey to become the number one contender. And we want to take you back to a couple of weeks ago on Monday Night Raw. Pete Dunne, after picking up a victory, Finn Balor hit the ring and attacked the champion from behind, sending a message that he was coming for the Intercontinental Gold. Finn Balor has taken on a new persona these last couple of months. We talked about the Extreme Rules matchup at SummerSlam against Jeff Hardy, which saw Finn Balor get his hand raised on that night. Balor has been on a roll. We mentioned earlier the victory over Drew McIntyre as well. Now with this newfound aggression and a recent momentum, the Prince turned his sights to the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne. And for the first time in several years, Finn Balor is looking to get the Intercontinental Championship around that waist here this evening. It will be no easy task. The Bruiserweight has been on an absolute roll. 
Pete Dunne, ever since making his main roster debut at Backlash, has yet to be defeated in singles competition. Wins over Apollo Crews, Jinder Mahal, Drew McIntyre. As we mentioned, Pete Dunne picked up the victory in the Intercontinental Championship. The last time we were on pay-per-view at SummerSlam over Drew McIntyre and Sheamus on that night, surviving the triple threat. But will the Bruiserweight survive the Prince here on his second championship defense here tonight? The Prince and the Challenger in the ring. And here comes your Intercontinental Champion. The Bruiserweight, Pete Dunne has already successfully defended the gold on the Raw after SummerSlam against the modern day Maharaja, Jinder Mahal. Pete Dunne walks in tonight with a swagger, walks in with an attitude, and walks in with a chip on his shoulder. As we mentioned, this man has yet to be defeated in singles competition since making his main roster debut. And as you saw in the highlights, Pete Dunne, moments after a victory over Jordan Devlin on Monday Night Raw, Attacked from behind by the Prince Finn Balor. So tonight for Pete Dunne isn't just about retaining that prestigious gold in the Intercontinental Championship, but it's about getting some retribution over Finn Balor for that recent attack on Monday Night Raw. Every time we've mentioned this matchup for weeks, we've mentioned the possibility of a wrestling classic. Tonight may be Extreme Rules. There's going to be some modern age wrestling between Finn Balor and Pete Dunne for a championship that personifies that very word right here, right now at Extreme Rules. Introducing the challenger from Bray County, Wicklow, Ireland, weighing in at 190 pounds. And introducing the champion from Birmingham, England, weighing in at 205 pounds. He is the WWE Intercontinental Champion, the Bruiserweight, Pete Dunne. The official in-ring introductions for your first of five championship matches here tonight. The Intercontinental Championship on the line as the champion holds over the gold. The Prince, the Bruiserweight, Finn Balor, Pete Dunne, Seattle, Washington, Extreme Rules. You want a wrestling clinic? Look no further, as it is time for your first championship match. And the bell has sounded, and we are underway here tonight. This should be a tremendous wrestling contest for the Intercontinental Championship, a championship that personifies that very words, professional wrestling. And you're looking at two of the very best professional wrestlers in the entire world inside of that ring right now. A veteran Finn Balor. And even though Pete Dunne, young in age, has been inside that ring for many years as well. These two guys know their way around the squared circle. And this isn't the first time they've stepped foot inside the ring with each other. They know each other well, two United Kingdom athletes Looking to settle the score here tonight and bring home the Intercontinental Gold. And for Finn Balor, this is really his first matchup moving on after the summer really was a story for Finn Balor of trying to finally defeat Jeff Hardy. It was loss after loss for Finn Balor. Actually a loss in an Intercontinental Championship matchup several months ago. That was kind of the beginning of the end for Finn Balor in his eyes that caused him to need this change, this newfound aggression from Finn Balor. And he really couldn't move on with himself until he finally got Jeff Hardy out of his hindsight. Defeated Jeff Hardy, if you will. And that's what Finn Balor did at our last pay-per-view SummerSlam when he broke out the persona of the demon and met Jeff Hardy in his matchup. Extreme rules. Finn Balor won on that night. We haven't seen Jeff Hardy since. Again, as we mentioned a few moments ago during our last contest, Finn Balor owns a recent victory, a big time victory on Monday Night Raw over the Scottish psychopath Drew McIntyre. So whether you like Finn Balor's attitude or not, no one can say that Balor hasn't earned this opportunity here this, this evening. I certainly don't condone the post-match attack on Monday Night Raw by the Prince, but the actions from bell to bell certainly speak for themselves. But if you want to talk about actions from bell to bell, 
Again, Pete Dunne, yet to be defeated in singles action. Remember back at Backlash, all the way back on April the 11th of this year, Pete Dunne making his main roster debut, defeating Apollo Crews on that night. And he has showed up and showed out ever since. Every time Pete Dunne steps inside of that victory, excuse me, steps inside of that ring, he claims victory. It's the reason he is holding the Intercontinental Championship here today. A championship opportunity he earned in the lead up to Phoenix, Arizona at SummerSlam. And an opportunity that Pete Dunne took full advantage of when the lights were on bright and the gold was on the line. But as they say, it's much harder to retain the championship than obtain the championship. Pete Dunne won the gold at SummerSlam and he successfully defended it just 24 hours later on Monday Night Raw against his number one contender at the time, Jinder Mahal. But now Pete Dunne, over the last couple of weeks, knowing there's a target on his back, as his number one in sight, that being Finn Balor. And you would love to think with the Intercontinental Championship on the line and two great wrestlers in there competing for the gold, that we'll be talking about a wrestling matchup with respect right now. But not only the fact of the aggression and the attitude of Finn Balor, especially with the post-match attack, but we know the bruiser way himself, like him or not, ain't a guy making a lot of friends in that locker room. Pete Dunne is snot nose in your face, punch you in the mouth, and get the victory inside of that ring. And he'll do it with style, and he'll do it with finesse, but he'll do it in brutality as well. That is why they call him the Bruiserweight, and that is why he was such a long reigning United Kingdom champion back in his stint in NXT. Also a former NXT Tag Team Champion, and of course your current Intercontinental Champion, as we are seeing the Bruiserweight at work right now. Both men really showing their style throughout this contest. What a wrestling matchup it's been since the opening bell these last number of minutes. On a night that's all about WWE going extreme, these guys going to prove that they don't need any weapons to get the job done inside of the ring. Well, he has Pete Dunne, nice backbreaker there, and that's going to hurt more than your average backbreaker. No knee pads for the bruiser weight. Likes doing things the old school way. That's going to hurt even more for his opponent, case in point. I mean, the fact that Prince Finn Balor is on his back on the canvas. And of course, the several finishing maneuvers of Pete Dunne. That's, uh, oh, wait a minute, Finn Balor taking a tumble to the outside. Pete Dunne not going fancy there, just shoving Finn Balor. Look at this, oh man! Finn Balor first took the fall to the outside. Pete Dunne went for the senton. Balor had his eyes open, saw Dunn come and got out of the way, and the Intercontinental Champion crashing and burning on the outside. And both men gonna be coming out of this match. Win, lose, or draw. Lower back problems from both of these men here tonight. As Pete Dunn with the monkey flip on the outside. Oh, I had to be careful, would have almost got his leg caught up in the steel ring post there, and Pete Dunn coming off the apron with the ax hammer. A lot more simple than that senton that he was looking for a moment ago. And this time, was certainly effective there. A nice kick by the bruiser. Wait, Pete Dunne's got something in mind. This match continuing to brawl on the outside here. A count out, whether it's a double count out or a single count out, would lead to the Intercontinental Champion, Pete Dunne, retaining his championship here tonight. But Pete Dunne, we know how the bruiser Wright likes to do it. He likes to get things done one, two, three inside of the ring. And of course, for Finn Balor, he needs to do it that way in order to walk out with the Intercontinental Champion here tonight. And both these men taking a moment to breathe. They've been going at it hard since the opening bell. Finn Balor comes back in. Pete Dunne meets him with an old school knife edge chop to the chest. And now here's where Pete Dunne showcases his skills like no one else can. Just drags Finn Balor down to the canvas, nothing pretty, and beats him down with his bare knuckles and boot sole to the back. And now coming from the top rope, Double stomp may have just knocked the sturdum out of Finn Balor. Bruiser weighed into the cover, and Balor gets the shoulder up. Well, that's some classic style offense there from the Bruiser weight. Nothing pretty, just brutality. The challenger's day is well up until that moment. Nice reversal from Finn. Gonna whip the champion off. Pete Dunn now set into the corner. Pete Dunne's got to be careful in those corners. You know how Finn Balor likes to do it. Head to the top rope, hit that coup de gras, send things packing for his opponent. Pete Dunne once again. Going pure brutality here. Just chomping at the fingertips of the Prince. 
I think Pete Dunn's got a couple of screws loose, but I don't, I don't think we can challenge the man. He's the Intercontinental Champion for a reason, but Finn Balor, look at this, got the champion up, and nothing pretty but effective. Suplex sends the champion down, and now the champion dazed and confused into the corner as the Prince continues his offense. And now Pete Dunn in trouble there as Balor taking him out with that kick. And the champion's down, and he's in a precarious situation. Finn Balor could be heading up and could be looking to the grass here. Pete Dunn way into the corner. I think Finn realized that was going to go with just Pete Dunn's position there on the mat, but the Bruiser Ray had some time to recuperate there as Finn Balor gets the legs taking him out from under him. Balor's dazed, the momentum shifts back to the Intercontinental Champion as he comes running, goes for the Enziguri, Balor ducks, Balor grabs a hold, oh wait a minute, Pete Dunne in trouble, 1916, may have just knocked out the champion for good, hand over the gold to the Prince here in Seattle, no, Pete Dunne dragging his shoulder off the canvas, and the Intercontinental Championship matchup continues. And the legs get taken out from Finn Balor. Pete Dunne surviving one of Balor's best cards here tonight. And now he's starting to unload. The kicks, the punches, the forearm. Wait a minute here. Pump, handle, slam, cometh in Seattle. Straight into the cover. And the gold remains with the bruiser weight. Pete Dunne surviving an incredible hard-hitting wrestling affair between himself and the Prince here tonight. Finn Balor throwing some of his best tricks at Finn Balor, or excuse me, at Pete Dunne here tonight. Missed that coup de gras, landed the 1916, but in the end, Pete Dunne awoken from the canvas, threw everything he had at the Prince, and with that pump handle slam, the icing on the cake of the damage that had been done from bell to bell in this contest, the Intercontinental Championship is going to remain with the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne coming out of this incredible matchup at Extreme Rules. Here is your winner, and still the WWE Intercontinental Champion, the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne. Another great championship defense, and another successful one at that. The Intercontinental Championship remains on the shoulder of the Bruiserweight. The following contest is a ladder match. It is for the WWE Bruiserweight Championship! It is now time for your second championship matchup here this evening. It is for the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. It is a SummerSlam rematch, this time with ladders in play. And making his way down the aisle first here tonight, the one and only Cruiserweight Champion of the World. The man defending the gold here tonight in this ladder match. The most exciting ricochet set to take place in this ladder match here this evening. The man who defeated Santos Escobar for the Cruiserweight Championship back at SummerSlam now meets that man once again in singles competition. And of course this matchup was set to be a triple threat originally with Isaiah Swerve Scott unfortunately as announced Last night on Saturday night's main event, Isaiah Swerve Scott suffering a concussion this past week on Thursday night's main event against Joaquin Wilde and not able to compete here tonight in the triple threat matchup. Isaiah Swerve Scott will receive a Cruiserweight Championship match upon his return. However, this matchup here this evening will now be a one-on-one -on -one affair between the champion and challenger, which has made this a one-on-one -on -one SummerSlam rematch. And the Cruiserweight Champion Set to throw everything at the wall and put everything on the line here tonight to retain the gold against the man he defeated in Phoenix, Arizona, the leader of Legado del Fantasma, 
Santos Escobar. Santos Escobar held the gold from April the 11th all the way till June 26th. Santos Escobar won the Cruiserweight Championship at the Backlash pay-per-view in a six-man elimination challenge on that night. One of the members of that matchup, the one and only Ricochet. And when Ricochet came up that came up short, excuse us, on that night, he made it his goal throughout the summer to reclimb the rankings in the cruiserweight division and earn a championship opportunity at the cruiserweight championship of the world. After defeating Isaiah Swerve Scott in the finals of a two-round cruiserweight championship eliminator, Ricochet meant Santos Escobar in Phoenix, Arizona at SummerSlam for the gold. And after an exciting contest, Ricochet knocking off Santos Escobar to become the new cruiserweight champion of the world. Of course, it was a couple of weeks ago on main event where Legato Del Fantasma took another loss to Ricochet the Swerve and the returning Hurricane Helms, which originally put Swerve in this contest. But again, with that concussion and sideline here tonight, we now have a one-on-one -on -one meeting. The one and only Ricochet, Santos Escobar, the first man to climb the ladder will leave with the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Our fourth match here this evening, our second championship matchup. And you just know that these two men are going to leave everything and everything inside of that ring. All to take home the Cruiserweight Championship that Ricochet again fought so hard to earn that championship opportunity. Made his way through the Cruiserweight Championship Eliminator a number of months ago. Then challenging Isaiah Swerve Scott in the number one contenders matchup. Picking up the win there. And a hard fought victory over Santos at SummerSlam. And for Santos Escobar, tonight is about getting that one on one rematch that he wanted originally. But again, after that six man tag team matchup, Isaiah picking up the win over Santos Escobar in that contest. That is what put Isaiah Swerve Scott in this matchup originally. And again, the Swerve will get a Cruiserweight Championship opportunity upon his return. But tonight, all roads have led now to this SummerSlam rematch between the one and only and the leader of Legato Del Fantasma as Ricochet comes from the top with the Hurricane Rana. And that high-flying offense that not only does the Cruiserweight division do so well, but the one and only Ricochet may be one of, if not the best in the world at doing so. That is what led to Ricochet taking home the gold at SummerSlam. With ladders into play tonight, you never know what is going to happen. Ricochet getting caught with that bicycle kick from Santos. And now Escobar's got a ladder. He's bringing it into the ring. Ricochet's got one in hand. And you got to watch when the steel is in play because you never know what's going to happen. Ricochet coming at Santos with a nice neck breaker there. First man to climb the ladder and retrieve the gold. Leaves the Cruiserweight Champion, the Champion Ricochet, the Challenger Santos Escobar. But it ain't as easy as it sounds. It is a challenge to climb the ladder, stay on the ladder, and pull down the gold while your opponent is incapacitated enough and not able to pull you off. These men got to be careful of the falls that could take place on the steel ladders as well as off of the steel ladders. A very dangerous situation here tonight at Extreme Rules. The caution will be thrown in the wind with a chance to leave with the Cruiserweight Championship. And what a kick from Santos. Oh, Escobar. And just a situation of position inside of that ring. That ladder fell on Ricochet. And now Escobar, this is smart strategy here. Looking to take out the knee of Ricochet. Can't put him away with a, a tap out in this one to win the matchup. He can certainly take out the legs. Cause Ricochet not being able to climb. And what a... Fall away neck breaker again. This time Escobar catching the end of that ladder. Man, just the ladders just being involved in that ring as these men basically look to out wrestle each other in the early moments of this matchup, already causing damage. As Escobar with a snap suplex. And both these men are precariously close to that ladder. A moment to go off that maneuver. Escobar setting up the ladder, middle of the ring. He's going to be the first to climb here, and this is where things get interesting. Ricochet's going to follow him up. Escobar's got his hands on the championship gold, but Ricochet's right there trying to combat him. Ricochet losing his balance there, now trying to hurry back up. Escobar has got to watch the champion here. Wait a minute, Ricochet throwing Santos Escobar off. Escobar taking the first fall. Ricochet now, it's not as easy as it looks 
to pull down that championship. He got to uncuff it. Unlock it, excuse me. And unhook the championship that's hanging precariously above the arena here tonight. Ricochet's got his hands. He's trying to undo it. Santos Escobar now racing back up to the rugs of that ladder. And Ricochet trying to eat those punches, but Escobar laying him in, flushing out. Ricochet takes the fall. Ricochet's down. You know he's going to... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. From the top, Escobar. What a super fly splash. Escobar knew Ricochet wasn't gonna get it, wasn't gonna go down without a fight, throwing a caution into the wind with that splash there. But Ricochet, you want to talk about just trying to absorb the pain and get back into this matchup. Now meets Escobar back on the rugs. Oh, what a kick, Ricochet. And Escobar goes down off the kick. Oh, wait a minute. Ricochet's now heading to the top of the ladder. Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me! Shooting star press from the heavens from the one and only. And you hear the crowd here at Seattle. Oh, wait a minute. Ricochet, not again. Not again. The shooting star press was enough. Now he's eyeing up something else. Oh, my goodness. And now going back to the top rope. 630. My God. I'm not going to have a voice by the end of this night. Ricochet, you want to talk throwing caution in the wind. Ricochet taking that expression to the fullest extent of shooting star press. That Huracan Ron of Frankensteiner. How the hell he landed that so flush off the top of the ladder? Be my guest to figure it out. Followed it up with a 630. Some tell Santos Escobar trying to scave to his feet there. And the Cruiserweight Champion knows how hard this match is going to be to pick up the victory. Trying to do everything he can to keep Escobar down. But wait a minute, Escobar! Knocking down the ladder and Ricochet takes a fall. This time, not voluntarily. The ladder's back up and to see how fast these two Cruiserweights scaling the rugs to try to get their hands on the gold that hangs above the ring here tonight. Yeah, you want to talk about the dangers of a ladder match? Look no further as Ricochet once again falls spine first on the canvas below. Escobar's got something in mind here. And a crossbody for the top of the ladder. These guys are using those ladders here tonight as bases to take to the air, taking high flying to a new level for the Cruiserweight Championship here at Extreme Rules. Escobar's got his hands. Ricochet making that ladder unbalanced. Now a chop goes for the kick. Escobar, but a watch here. Situation gets dangerous when both men are swinging on the ladder. Escobar goes down. Ricochet again has got his eyes on Escobar. Not again! Shooting star press for the second time in this contest. My God, Ricochet. Just doesn't give a damn. No way is he going to do something else. Phoenix Splash and Santos Escobar got the knees up. How the hell are these men still standing? An average man will be down for the count and in the hospital at this point. But these two men are like gladiators out here tonight battling for the gold. My God, I don't even know what to say right now. As Escobar's got his hands on the Cruiserweight Championship, looking to become a three-time Cruiserweight Champion. Ricochet's back up. And the battle once again continues on the rugs of the ladder, and Escobar goes down. Santos Escobar is dazed. Ricochet now, I think, is trying to decide whether that's enough to keep Santos down and out for good. He's going to elect to try to pull down the Cruiserweight Championship. He's got a good opportunity here. Escobar's got a knee up. Now he's climbing up fast, trying to take Ricochet's eye off the ball. A couple of shots to the rib cage. I would say would be enough to keep any normal man down, but these men are not average men. Ricochet trying to knock Santos Escobar off with the kicks, but again, Escobar battles back. Back and forth we go here. Teeter-totter at the top of the ladder. Back and forth brawl. Oh, wait a minute. Santos Escobar. No way. Ricochet 
That may be the exclamation point that sends the Cruiserweight Championship to the Legato del Fantasma family. That is a rib cage crushing maneuver. Somehow Ricochet kicks up. The ladder becomes unbalanced. Holy, what a forearm. Santos off the ladder. Ricochet again with the shove. Escobar. A fall from the heavens once more. And these guys, I don't even have the words right now to explain the insanity we are witnessing in this ladder match here this evening for the Cruiserweight Championship. And Ricochet pulls down the gold. These men getting the standing ovation they deserve here tonight in Seattle. The falls from the heavens that we just witnessed. The caution in the wind that these men threw. Sacrifice leads to reward. To the victor goes the spoils. Ricochet survives the ladder match and is leaving Seattle, Washington still your cruiserweight champion of the world. My God, what a ladder match. The World Tag Team Championships of the WWE set to be defended in our second of two SummerSlam rematches here this evening. The former champions are out on the hunt. Eric Ivar, the Viking Raiders, looking to hold the gold once more here at Extreme Rules. The following contest is a tag team tables match. It is for the WWE World Tag Team Championship. At a combined weight of 552 pounds, Ivar and Eric the Viking Raiders. It was back on June 26 at SummerSlam where Dominic and Rey Mysterio pulled off the upset and took away the World Tag Team Championships from Eric and Ivar, the Viking Raiders. And an incredible tag team matchup in Phoenix, Arizona on that night now leads to this tables affair here tonight at Extreme Rules. Dominic and Rey Mysterio have been on a roll for several months. That is what led them to getting a tag team championship opportunity in the first place. They now take that momentum to here tonight in Seattle, but they're gonna have to deal with an impatient and hungry Eric and Ivar who were chomping at the bit to get back their World Tag Team Championships that they had an oh-so-dominant reign with. They defeated RK Bro, Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan, Legato del Fantasma, but the Mysterios were their kryptonite at SummerSlam. Now it is time for these two men, or these two teams, why have you, meet yet again. But this time, it won't be won by pinfalls or submissions. Somebody's gonna have to go through the wood to leave with the gold here tonight in Seattle. At a combined weight of 375 pounds, they are the World Tag Team Champions. The team of Dominic and Ray Mysterio. Dominic and Ray Mysterio, the World Tag Team Champions. Heading into this championship match tonight with the Viking Raiders. But remember the news that we found out last night at Saturday night's main event. The winning team here tonight already has their next championship defense set. Whether that be the Mysterios or whether that be the Viking Raiders. The winning team here tonight goes into Monday Night Raw tomorrow night. And they will put the titles up against Damian Priest and Dominic Dijakovic. There will be no rest for the weary no matter who walks out of this matchup unscathed. The World Tag Team Championships on the line. Third championship matchup here this evening. And after the matchup we saw these teams throw down at SummerSlam, I can't imagine what we're about to see before our very eyes with tables involved. And here we go with our World Tag Team Championship matchup. 
Of course, again, this is a tables matchup, tornado style rules, no pinfalls, no submissions. This match can only be won when one of these four men breaks through the hard wood of the table. And it leads to some very precarious situations. Because again, as we mentioned, pinfalls or submissions are out of the question in this contest. A simple fall through a table that some are already set up at ringside. Dominic could have just got shoved off there into a table. This match could have been over already. It leads to some very dangerous situations. I can't imagine this match is going to go long as these two teams got one goal in mind. And that's putting their opponents through the wood. And the winning team going to walk out the World Tag Team Champions and then already has a date set with Dominic Dijakovic and Damian Priest. No matter that be the Mysterios or the Viking Raiders. Another Tag Team Championship matchup set for Monday Night Raw. And did you see Rey Mysterio there diving to the outside? Didn't catch all that elbow on Eric, but certainly throwing caution in the wind. And you remember the matchup at SummerSlam? It was a very dominant matchup in more ways than one for Dominic and Rey Mysterio. They came in with a plan on that night, executed it to full fruition, and obviously worked out in their favor when they walked out with the championships. See a table already set up inside of that ring. Another one in there. Dominic's grabbing another. It's only going to take one table, remember, for this matchup to be over. Hell, I'm sure there's a little bit of a personal vendetta for the Viking Raiders. Retribution in mind for the Mysterios taking away their championships. More tables, the better in their eyes. More destruction for the raid. It's going to leave a happy Eric and Ivar, especially if they leave with the World Tag Team Championships around their waist here tonight. Mysterio springboard goes for the moonsault. Eric gets out of the way. And while we have Dominic Mysterio and Ivar brawling on the outside here. Also have our announce tables here at ringside. Somebody breaks through one of these. We're going to have the same result in this contest. And there's Rey Mysterio. Nice maneuver there. It's moments after Eric set up that table inside the ring. And it could be so easy for somebody to break through one of these tables. Rey Mysterio goes for a high-risk maneuver. Gets possibly knocked off the top rope. Could fall through a table. As long as it's in an offensive manner by Eric and Ivar. And that could lead to the World Tag Team Championships. Leaving with the Viking Rainers here tonight. You never know what's going to happen when tables are in play. Off the ladder match we just got done watching. Moments ago between Ricochet and Santos Escobar. Taught us anything. It's expect the unexpected. Rey Mysterio taking a fall to the outside there. Looks like Eric was trying to clear the ring. So he could set up the destruction. Table inside. Meanwhile, Dominic Mysterio sends another one in there. Dominic accidentally knocking down the wood as both teams find their way back inside the squared circle. Of course, this is our third of five championship matches here tonight. Still to come, the WWE Women's Championship on the line. Bianca Belair, Asuka, Shotzi, triple threat match up there. And then, of course, the five-man elimination challenge in our main event for the WWE Championship. It's been an awesome night at Extreme Rules thus far, and the action keeps on rolling on here at night in Seattle. And Mysterio, a nice shot. Eric on the outside. Meanwhile, Dominic is working over Ivar in that ring. Dominic continuing to get better week after week with his father by his side. Ooh. Dominic wasn't careful there. Ivar could have easily put him through the table. Oh, look at this. Ivar... Could be looking for maybe a slam or a fall away slam, but Dominic able to escape it there. That was a very precarious situation for Dominic Mysterio that he just escaped. The brawl continues on the outside between Ray and Eric. Looks like Dominic Mysterio's got something in mind. Ivar's dazed. Dominic. Dominic Mysterio. Eric better turn around. Dominic, no way. With the strength through the table. And just like that, the bell sounds. Tornado rules leads to absolute chaos. And Dominic Mysterio finding the strength and the will to muscle up the big man. And secure the victory for the father and son duo here tonight. Hell, we mentioned, I don't, we didn't think it was going to be a long fight. It was certainly an effective one that saw destruction laying in the ring right there. Dominic and Ray leave, still with the championships.
Well, coming up next here at Extreme Rules, the WWE Women's Championship is on the line in a triple threat matchup. Asuka defends against Bianca Belair and Shotzi, two former champions and the Empress. Who's gonna leave with the gold? At SummerSlam, the world bared witness to the third meeting between WWE Women's Champion Bianca Belair and her number one contender, Shotzi. After Shotzi ran through multiple roadblocks, she earned herself this opportunity and a chance to become champion. After a matchup that saw both women digging down deep to continue, Shotzi pulled off the biggest win of her career and was set to leave with the gold. But before she could even hold the championship in her hands, Mrs. Money in the Bank Asuka surprised us all and decided to cash in at an opportune time. An exhausted Shotzi gave her all to try to fend off the Empress, but unfortunately for her, Asuka was too much for her to handle. The Women's Championship of the WWE left Phoenix on that night in the grasp of Asuka. Over the last number of weeks, Bianca Belair and Shotzi have fought their hardest to regain lost momentum, while Asuka already has a successful championship defense under her belt. All three of these women are vying for the same end goal, to be the leader of the WWE Women's Division as its champion. All three women will now meet at the same crossroads tonight. Will Shotzi become a two-time champion and finally hold the gold in her hands? Will Bianca Belair regain the championship that she had a most successful reign with? Or will the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, continue to wave the flag of the WWE and leave Seattle with the WWE Women's Championship? The WWE Women's Championship on the line. Triple threat rules. One fall to a finish. Let's get after it. The following contest is a triple threat match and is for the Raw Women's Championship. Introducing the challenger from Knoxville, Tennessee, Bianca Bianca Belair had a most successful reign with the WWE Women's Championship. In the last number of months alone, she defeated Sasha Banks. She defeated Rhea Ripley not once but twice, one of those matches being a no-holds-barred match in the main event of Monday Night Raw. She meant her match at SummerSlam, where the number one contender Shotzi pulled off the victory in the third meeting with Bianca Belair over the last several months and became the new WWE Women's Champion. But as you saw, before Shotzi could even hold the gold in her hands, the Empress of Tomorrow cashing in her Money in the Bank contract and taking the Women's Championship away from this woman right here. Two former champions with a score to settle and the gold on the line. And introducing the challenger from Oakland, California, Shotzi! We've talked about it for weeks. We talked about it at SummerSlam. Week after week, Shotzi has gotten better inside the squared circle, pulling off victories over the likes of Io Shirai, Shayna Baszler, and even in recent memory, the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. I was on the Raw after SummerSlam when Asuka was still holding, or excuse me, the Raw before SummerSlam when Asuka was still holding the Money in the Bank briefcase. Asuka, of course, defeated Shotzi for the gold at SummerSlam, already has a successful championship reign, a defense under her belt on the Raw after SummerSlam where she defeated Casey Cat and Zaro. But as you saw in the video package, before this contest, Shotzi and Bianca Belair continuing to get better, continuing to build momentum these last recent weeks on Monday Night Raw. But it all leads to tonight. Both these former champions looking to get back the gold. And for Shotzi, she's looking to become a two-time champion, but hold the gold in her hands for the very first time. Never even got a chance to hold the women's championship. Asuka reared her head at SummerSlam as soon as she possibly could. There was no rest for the weary in Phoenix, Arizona, but tonight it's an even playing field. Both challengers 100%. The champion coming in the same. There will be no excuses, and only one woman can leave with the WWE Women's Championship. Bianca Belair has entered. Shotzi has entered. And now Seattle gets taken over by the Empress of Tomorrow. And introducing the champion from Osaka, Japan, 
the Raw Women's Champion, Asuka. One of the most dominant women in WWE history. A decorated woman as well. Former NXT Women's Champion. A championship that she never even was defeated to lose. A former Women's Tag Team Champion. Former SmackDown and Raw Women's Champion. And now in the midst of a current reign as the WWE Women's Champion. Asuka has done it all here in the WWE. Including win the first ever Women's Royal Rumble matchup. She added another list. Or excuse me, another accolade to her career. Back on May the 2nd when she captured the Money in the Bank briefcase. Which then led Asuka to the prize that's around her waist here tonight. But with the odds stacked against the champion. Two to one odds she walks out without the gold here tonight. How will Asuka fare against two hungry challengers? We are going to have our answer right here, right now. The lights are on bright, and it's another championship matchup here tonight in Seattle. Extreme Rules leads to this triple threat matchup. Only one fall to a finish, and triple threat rules apply. That is the goal that is on the line. The stage is set and the time is now for your women's main event here at Extreme Rules as we are underway with this triple threat matchup. And Asuka immediately going for Shotzi and takes her out with that kick right there. You know, of course, there's all the writing between these three women coming out of SummerSlam and over the last couple of weeks, but you gotta think if Asuka's judgment choice of when she cashed in that briefcase was due to the fact that Shotzi had defeated her on the Monday Night Raw prior to SummerSlam. I wonder if there's a little bit of a personal vendetta there that Asuka wanted that win back over Shotzi and that's why she decided to cash in when she did. Nonetheless, it is the nature of the Money in the Bank briefcase, whether it's Shotzi or Bianca Belair. It was an awesome matchup between both women, a very grueling matchup. There's a good chance the Empress was lying in wait for whoever walked out the victor on that night. Well, regardless, that was then, and this is now. Asuka is the champion. Bianca Belair was a dominant champion for the better part of a year, looking to get back the gold. And Shotzi just wants to hold that gold in her grasp for the very first time. And I'm sure for Shotzi tonight, after she fought so hard to gain that opportunity at SummerSlam to finally defeat Bianca Belair, she's probably, if I had to guess, coming in the most hungry and most motivated out of all these women here tonight. Out of Bianca Belair, who, like I said, was the champion for the better part of the year, who obviously wants to get the championship back, and Asuka, who, of course, wants to retain. But we know Shotzi's story. We've been following it very well over the last number of months. She wants that championship more than anything. Right now, she's out of the equation. We have a one-on-one -on -one match between Bianca Belair and Asuka, and this is the danger of a triple threat matchup. Remember we talked about earlier in the Intercontinental Championship scenario, Pete Dunne pinned Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam, Sheamus losing the Intercontinental Championship without even having to be pinned. We could see a similar situation in this very matchup. Asuka could lose the gold to Shotzi or Bianca, Bel Bianca Belair by one of those women pinning, pinning the other, excuse me. Asuka does not even have to be involved in the equation here tonight to lose the gold as she picked up the victory for in Phoenix. Beautiful maneuver there by Shotzi as she takes the ring, takes out Bianca Belair, and now is looking to work over the Empress of Tomorrow. This is the first time Shotzi's getting her hands on Asuka since SummerSlam. I'm sure in the midst of trying to get her championship match, or excuse me, championship back in this matchup, she's going to be laying in those shots a little harder, a little extra meaning in those right hands and those kicks and everything that Shotzi's going to throw in this matchup. Things are personal for Shotzi when it comes to the championship. Oh, look at this. Look at the challengers here. Double team suplex on the Empress of Tomorrow. The challengers obviously see Asuka as the biggest threat in this contest, looking to take her out of the equation. The double team, Bianca Belair now uses her strength in a press slam, sends Asuka face first on the canvas. Now Shotzi going to take advantage of the EST having her back turn, but she turns around into a spear from Asuka. Now once again takes Shotzi out of the equation and we're left with the EST and the Empress and Asuka takes a fall to the outside now. And now Bianca Belair's heading to the top rope. 
Gonna dive, crossbody to the outside. Take it, Oscar, off her feet. I'm sure Shotzi's counting her blessings. She's a little knocked out right now. But she doesn't know the maneuver that she just luckily was able to avoid. Belair choosing Asuka to keep the fight going on there. And now continuing the fight on the champion. And moves like that are going to take the champion not just out of this match, but possibly out for a while. Power bomb right on the floor. But once again, Shotzi takes advantage of the back being turned. Sends, Be sends Belair right into the steel steps. Shotzi's in there with the champion. Asuka is dazed off that flurry of offense from the EST. Now fights back, going for the hip attack. Had it avoided, but now Belair from behind. And sends Shotzi off her feet, and Asuka comes from behind. And continuing to see the dangers of the triple threat matchup. Gotta have eyes in the back of your head as Asuka's truly taking advantage of that. And credit to the champion where it's due, ruling the ring right now over her two challengers. Blair's down. Asuka's heading to the top rope. Meanwhile, Shotzi working over Blair. Asuka coming from the top, dropping a knee on Blair. And a Shotzi with an elbow. And once again, I'm seeing we're seeing some possible this time unintentional double teaming here for two of the three women in this contest. Blair out of the equation. Asuka now dropping Shotzi. Nice kick. Right at where it's due. The champion so dominant inside the ring. Of course, she just picked up a victory over Doe Drop this past week on main event. Asuka, of course, coming in with loads of momentum in this contest. Back and forth, the teeter-totter goes between Shotzi and Asuka as the EST finds her way back inside the squared circle. And now Asuka goes center over the top rope, and we're down to Belair versus Shotzi. A SummerSlam rematch here in the midst of this triple threat affair. Blair locking up with Shotzi here. Look at this, gonna look to use her strength to her advantage, something that aided her a ton in their SummerSlam matchup. And there's Asuka once again coming from behind with the Bulldog. Oh, and Asuka with the palm strike, and that may be a knockout blow to Bianca Belair. And now Asuka with a hip attack to Shotzi in the corner. Blair comes at her, Asuka with the spear. And Asuka another hip attack to Shotzi. The Empress is ruling the ring as she now works over Blair after Shotzi has been taken out of the equation. The EST is dazed. Wait a minute. Asuka's tying her up. Could be looking. Asuka lock, locked in on challenger one of two. And Blair taps out. And Asuka has retained the WWE Women's Championship here tonight. Blair sacrificing her championship opportunity for the sake of not risking an injury. Unfortunately for Shotzi, once again, coming up in defeat here tonight and not even having to be involved in the equation. Disappointing for both women, but Asuka truly earning this victory here tonight at Extreme Rules. The dominance of the Empress continues. Shotzi, Bianca, they gave it their all. But when it comes to who's walking out of the arena here tonight in Seattle with the gold, it belongs to the Empress of tomorrow. Asuka shows up and shows out at Extreme Rules and is leaving with the Women's Championship. Well, coming up next at Extreme Rules, RK Bro has imploded before our very eyes. Tonight they meet in Falls Count Anywhere. Riddle versus Orton. This one is personal. May 23rd was an eerie night on Monday Night Raw. Upon arriving at the arena, Matt Riddle was found knocked out cold in the parking garage of the Moondy Center in Austin, Texas. His tag team partner, one half of RK Bro, Randy Orton made it his mission to hunt down whoever was the one to put Riddle on the shelf. Orton pointed the blame at the Hurt Business and Bobby Lashley due to recent events. Lashley denied those claims, but promised to put the Hurt on Randy Orton for uttering his very name. 
Over the coming weeks, Randy Orton would proceed to decimate and destroy every member of the Hurt Business, including a bruising victory over Bobby Lashley at SummerSlam. It seemed that Orton had done one good for his tag team partner. That was until July 13th, while Randy Orton was competing in the main event versus Austin Theory, that the truth was finally revealed. Riddle aired surveillance footage from the Moondy Center parking garage on May 23rd that showed Randy Orton was truly the one who decimated Riddle. The original bro would make his return for the first time in seven weeks and hold nothing back on his now former tag team partner. These two men have been trying to destroy each other ever since. Randy Orton claimed it was time to move on, that Riddle was holding back the Viper. Orton said he tried to put Riddle down easy, but the bro came back for vengeance. Orton stated he had no interest in Riddle riding his coattails any longer, but will give Riddle this last shot at glory. Riddle has one shot, one chance, one night at redemption. But if all fails, Orton swears to never cross paths with his old friend again. RK Bro has imploded before our eyes, and the end of the line is here. It's all or nothing for the original Bro. The Apex Predator is looking to hunt new prey, but first must face his past one last time. It's Falls Count Anywhere. Anything goes. No rules. No restrictions. It's a fight to settle the score. Right here. Right now. This long storied issue between the former members of RK Bro, Randy Orton, and the original Bro, Riddle, are set to fight things out once and for all. Falls count anywhere. The following contest is a Falls Count Anywhere match. Making his way to the ring from St. Louis, Missouri. Weighing in at 250 pounds, the Viper, Randy Orton. It would be missed words to say Randy Orton has been a different man as of late, because we have seen these kind of actions and this kind of attitude out of the Apex Predator several times throughout his career. But to see it happen on the other side of a man who we thought was Randy Orton's closest friend and the original Bro Riddle is absolutely heartbreaking to witness. It has been a very interesting situation to follow to say the very least. From May 23rd up until July 13th, Riddle was on the shelf due to the actions of that man right there, Randy Orton. Riddle returned with a vengeance. He wants Randy Orton's head on a silver platter. These two have been brawling and at each other's necks for weeks. Hence the reason why we have a Falls Count Anywhere match tonight. This match started in the parking garage of the Moon D Center in Austin, Texas. They fought in the backstage area. They fought at ringside upon Riddle's return. These two men have taken it everywhere in the arena already. There's no stone left uncovered. And these guys are going to rewrite it all here tonight. Riddle wants his revenge. Randy Orton wants to move past Riddle once and for all. And Randy Orton promised if he picks up the victory here tonight that he's putting Riddle in his past once and for all. This is Riddle's one shot, one chance at true retribution and vengeance over his former best friend in the world. The original bro is back in action. Let's see what he's got to offer. And his opponent from Las Vegas, Nevada, weighing in. 216 pounds, Riddle. Riddle has not been in the ring since the middle of May. And it's been quite some time since Riddle's got his hands dirty. But now with this situation with Randy Orton, Riddle's coming back for what we can only assume is at 100%. And now being able to step foot inside the ring again and get his hands dirty inside that squared circle this time with purpose, this time with reason. RK Bro has imploded, exploded week after week. And it's time to settle the score, a match we ever thought we'd see, but it happens here tonight. Orton versus Riddle, false count anywhere, extreme rules. We know what Randy Orton's motive's gonna be in this matchup. 
finish what he started on May 23rd, beat the hell out of Riddle, and put him in his past once and for all. Randy Orton wants to move on with his career. He saw Riddle holding him back from opportunities. And to be more specific, you remember back when these two men were the World Tag Team Champions and they lost those titles to the Viking Raiders on Monday Night Raw. Who was pinned in that original contest? That would be Riddle. When it came to Backlash and the rematch for the World Tag Team Championships, RK Bro versus the Viking Raiders. Who was pinned? Riddle. And who was the man that was chosen out of RK Bro? Only one of them was going to receive a Money in the Bank qualifying matchup a couple of months ago. And who was the man that was chosen? That was Riddle. Randy Orton saw Riddle stepping in the way of championship opportunities and decided it was time to cut his ties. Orton said in his words he tried putting Riddle down easy and tried to place the blame on Bobby Lashley in the Hurt Business. Orton wanted to move on without even having to face Riddle. But Riddle knew the truth. Riddle got his hands on the footage to prove it. And now Riddle wants his vengeance. Warren wants nothing to do with his old tag team partner, though, but promised him this one match here tonight. But remember what Orton said in the tweets a few weeks ago. This is the one shot he is giving Riddle. One shot, one night, one opportunity to get what he wants. But if Riddle fails, or Orton's, or Orton's words, excuse me, when Riddle ultimately does fail, then that's it. Riddle's got no more chances. There was only one and only chance to get the retribution he is looking for. Randy Orton's looking for one and done, moving past his tag team partner here tonight. That is the story that has been written on this contest over the last number of months. And things coming to blows these last number of weeks. And again, the reason for the Falls Count Anywhere matchup tonight, not just because the show is named Extreme Rules, but because of the fact that this brawl between these two men has literally been taken to every single corner of the arenas these last number of weeks and months, dating back to May 23rd and the original attack in the parking garage. These two men, again, fighting on the outside right now. Pinfalls and submissions can take place anywhere. Of course, no countouts, no disqualifications. And we saw those things and those stipulations really come to play when these two men were brawling with each other upon Riddle's return here at ringside a couple of weeks ago when Riddle put Randy Orton through a table, hit him over the head with a steel chair. An absolutely brutal awakening for Riddle and Randy Orton on that night. And then, of course, the week after, these two men, cameras cut rapidly to the backstage area. These two men were once again having another brawl, and Randy Orton got the better of Riddle on that night. Sent him spine first through the wood of a table, onto the concrete, on the floor backstage! And you remember what Riddle originally went out with an injury with, that we found out the night, that we now know that Randy Orton was the one who put him on the shelf. It was a concussion, a very serious concussion that Riddle had to take a few months off for. So Riddle's got to be careful tonight. We know he's 100%, but still, he never would have re-aggravated an old injury as Randy Orton took the announce table apart in front of us, but Riddle's now coming with other ideas. And as we mentioned for Orton, it's not just about moving past Riddle, it's about putting him out of his so-called misery, as Orton put it, once and for all. Orton tried putting Riddle on the shelf. Riddle came back for more. Orton wants to end Riddle's career once and for all tonight. Orton never wants to see the original bro in his grasp ever again. Riddle back in the ring. Randy Orton going after him here. Orton grabbing a hold. And another DDT. And again, the concussion that put Riddle on the shelf. He may be 100%, but there's always the lingering effect. And there's always the chance of re-aggravating old injuries. As now Riddle, awakening is the beast. Grabbing a hold of Randy Orton, sending him for a ride. And again, the close friendship of these two men, Randy Orton and Riddle. No one ever expected them to be as successful as they were as a tag team, become the friends they did, but the better part of a year held those, held those World Tag Team Championships, excuse me. It was only these last number of months where we really saw the unfortunate demise of RK Bro. Randy Orton, we talked about back at SummerSlam and the weeks that followed, how much effort that, and attention he put in to try to put down the Hurt Business. 
But he originally, wait a minute, we got a pinfall on the outside off the power bomb. Orton kick it out. Riddle wants to stick it to Orton tonight. Get that victory and stick it to the Viper. And remember, Orton originally didn't want to take the blame for putting Riddle on the shelf. He placed the blame on Bobby Lashley in the Hurt Business due to some of the recent events leading up to Money in the Bank and prior for the original bro and Lashley. Orton went through the Hurt Business, picked up a win over all of them, seemingly gained some momentum back on his side in the process for those losses that he suffered alongside Riddle. And wait a minute here, Orton's got the chair in hand. Riddle avoiding the chair shot though. It's almost as if Orton would have rather use the Hurt Business to try to gain some victories for himself, as we mentioned, to get momentum back on his side rather than take the blame for putting Riddle on the shelf. That's seemingly what happened. Riddle going for the cover here on Orton. Orton gets the shoulder up. Notice how this match has just been basically at ringside since the opening bell. This guy's not interested in a wrestling match here tonight. This is about a fight between these two former friends. And things are just getting brutal. That is a headbutt. Notice how many times Orton has gone to the head of Riddle. He knows a lingering effect may be there. And Riddle is smart to be avoiding that steel chair at all costs because if he takes a chair shot over the Chrome Dome, you absolutely know that Riddle is not going to be 100% for the rest of this contest. And Orton's down on the outside in a precarious situation. Riddle eyeing up the apex predator. Riddle once thought of Randy Orton as his best friend of the world, his mentor, for the better part of the last year. And I'm sure I didn't see this day standing across the ring from Randy Orton ever coming again. But unfortunately for him, the day has come. The time is today. And Riddle's getting what he wants. And Randy Orton once again clearing off another announce table. He's obviously got something in mind for Riddle. And Riddle, I think Orton was trying to throw him on the announce table there, but just the momentum. Riddle just eating the announce table right to the gut. It's enough to knock that, knock the wind out of you, possibly break a rib. Randy Orton got the chair! God damn it! Randy Orton with the chair over the head and to the rib cage of Riddle. You know, we try for unbiased commentary. But when you know the situation and you know the injuries that Riddle sustained, it gets a little bit hard to watch. And it kind of just makes you want to, God damn, Randy Orton. And Orton was going for the shot with the steel steps. Riddle able to block it. Orton's kind of trying to come after him here. And Riddle knows the situation. He's trying to avoid the weapons at all costs. Orton's head gets bounced off the announce table. And Riddle throwing Randy Orton back into the ring. We mentioned this match has majority been on the ringside area here, but Riddle has got other plans for the Apex Predator. He eats a right hand from the Viper. Riddle's down. Wait a minute. Where's Randy Orton going? Orton's heading to the outside. Orton's eyeing up those steel steps now. Riddle coming from behind. Oh, my. Man, that's hard to watch. Steel steps over the head of Riddle. Riddle's maybe knocked out. Orton's heading up the entrance ramp. It is false count anywhere. So I can't be surprised, but you do have to question what Randy Orton's got in mind. He's bringing those steel steps to the top of our entrance ramp here in Seattle tonight. Riddle's going after him. Orton with the steps, but Riddle able to block him. Whatever Orton's got in mind, Riddle's trying to avoid at all costs and take the momentum back on his side in this contest. Oof, what a kick to the head. And a riddle coming from behind, showcasing that MMA background. What shots? Submission hold on the top of the stage. Falls can anywhere come into play if Orton taps. This match is over, and Riddle gets his retribution. Orton may be a little bit dazed off that shots, but he's still got fight in him. Able to break the hold of the original bro. And Extreme Rules living up to its name here tonight. This match has been. So far away from a wrestling match as we obviously expected. A false count anywhere fight between these two men as Orton throws Riddle. Right near the LED boards here in the entrance. Riddle avoiding the fight now. Trying to go after Randy Orton. Wait a minute here. A little bit of the light beams in the way. But Riddle may have just secured himself a victory. And oh, Orton kicked out at the very last second. Orton does not want to give Riddle the satisfaction of gaining that momentum and gaining that retribution here tonight. Orton wants to stay on the high 
of cutting his ties with Riddle. And as we mentioned, put him down for good in the Viper's eyes. And Riddle almost had him there. Caught Randy Orton off guard. He absolutely wasn't expecting that. And things are going to be dangerous up there. The LED boards, the stage itself, the steel paneling. You think the ring and ringside is dangerous. It only gets more dangerous the farther you stray out. As it comes to expect in a false can anywhere stipulation as the fist fight continues at the top of the stage. Nothing short of brutality in this contest. I'm not on the stage. Randy Orton. What a suplex there as Riddle just falls spine first on the top of the entrance ramp. And remember, Orton's got them steel steps up there. I'm sure he brought them up there for a reason. And now Riddle precariously close to the edge of the stage. Hell, just this past Monday on Raw, we saw Edge and AJ Styles brought around the arena. Edge jumped off the damn stage. We could see something like that in this contest. Now, Orton trying to take the fight to Riddle, but Riddle countering. A little bit of that MMA background again, rolling out with the shots to Randy Orton. And Orton's now in a state where the stage teeter-tottering there, but Orton able to counter whatever Riddle had going. Elbow to the face, and now Lutez press. And that's going to hurt even more, falling on the edge of the stage there. And you guys can see, looking out here in the arena, a concrete floor lies next to these men right here. Randy Orton's heading down. Any fall on that is going to be about 20 times worse than any fall anywhere else in the arena. You got to assume. Orton's down there. Riddle's going to follow. I don't know if Riddle... Is really coming into this match. The, the way I'm reading this matchup, it doesn't almost seem like Riddle came in with any more of a strategy tonight rather than just fight Randy Orton. And when you see stuff like that, you can't really argue Riddle's strategy, but the majority of this contest has felt very Randy Orton dictated. Orton came in with a strategy tonight to hurt the original bro, and Riddle's hanging in there. Riddle's surviving the fight and has given Randy Orton the same amount of effort back Oh, well, no. come on now. Come on. Not on the concrete. Damn it. Again, we try to be unbiased. But when you know the situation and you know the prior injuries, it just gets hard to watch when you see Riddle coming off a concussion in his first match back, getting dropped back first, spine first, neck first, right on the concrete. And the longer this match progresses, and the more you see moves like that, and the more we talk about how this match has really been a Randy Orton dictated fight, you just get worried for the health and conditioning of the original bro. Is it worth to continue on with this fight with Randy Orton? But you know the heart of the original bro, Riddle. He came out with purpose tonight. He wants his vengeance, Jesus! My God. Riddle just ate that LED board right to the shoulder. That is not good. Wait a minute, he's got Randy Orton here. Go to sleep. German suplex on the concrete. And Randy Orton getting up out of instinct, but Riddle's grabbing a hold. Orton's clearly dazed here. And Orton once again takes a fall on the concrete. And that's going to keep the Viper down. Man, this match is truly living up to the extreme rules manner here as Riddle's beating the hell out of Randy Orton. Nothing pretty. Just a fist to the face is what Riddle wants here tonight. And not another power bomb on the concrete. And the positioning on that landing, Orton's head, most definitely might have hit that LED board. And again. And Riddle is just tossing Randy Orton all around the concrete here. He's going to follow it up with a damn suplex on the floor. Riddle is beating the hell out of his former tag team partner right now. The original bro is coming unglued. Orton's up. But Riddle's got something in mind. Oh, wait a minute. Orton cutting him off here. And a neck breaker. Oh, right on the concrete. Man, the brutality of this contest. Everything just hits harder. Lands more vicious like moves like that when you're fighting, not in a ring, but on a concrete floor. Orton climbing back up on the stage. We're now coming back down to try to throw off Riddle as he does there. The drop kick takes Riddle off his feet. These guys have been brawling in this area for a couple of minutes now. 
And you know these two aren't going to come out unscathed. There's going to be some bruises and beaten bodies getting drug out of the arena here tonight. Win, lose, or draw between Randy Orton and Riddle. These two men finding their way back up to the top of the stage here where we've been the last couple of minutes in this matchup. As we're really starting to get in deep waters in this false count anywhere. I don't even want to call it a match because this is a fight between Riddle and Orton. And Orton's had enough. Orton's walking his way back to the entrance, or excuse me, back down to the ring. Riddle's going to follow the Viper here, but obviously Riddle's taking a lot of offense, as is Randy Orton. Both men going to be moving slower as we get in the late rounds in this contest. Got to go split screen here. Riddle's walking his way down. Orton back out here at ringside. The Viper's clearly got something in mind as he's amongst the chaos. Riddle's grabbing a hold, or excuse me, Orton's grabbing a hold of the steel steps. Riddle's got to watch! And Orton just sneaking up, steel steps right to the head of the original bro. And Orton's got, oh my. Randy Orton going underneath the ring and grabbing a damn sledgehammer, and Riddle better avoid that at all costs. Riddle, coming back from injury tonight, has already taken a bruising beating from Randy Orton. Orton learning from his old mentor, Triple H, and pulling out a damn sledgehammer here tonight in Seattle. And Riddle's down, and Orton's going back to that sledgehammer. He's clearly got something in mind. Right to the sternum of Riddle. Oh, you see how he tried going down. Riddle avoided it. Oh, Riddle's just fighting out of instinct right now. You see, there's no orthodox... Or no plan, I should say. To what, whatever Riddle's trying to throw at Orton. But Orton is using the sledgehammer right now. And this is, this is starting to get a little bit of an uncomfortable situation here at Extreme Rules. Oh, my... Oh, God. Several sledgehammer shots. And I think we know what Orton is going for. RKO on the damn sledgehammer. Call for the damn bell. Forget the three. Randy Orton wins. Oh, my goodness. Folks, I don't even have any words for what we just witnessed. It almost got more heartbreaking and more uncomfortable to watch as this fight progressed. Former best friends, former tag team champions, former tag team partners. Here is your winner, the Viper, Randy Orton. For a moment there, there was almost a near hush in this arena. The uncomfortability and the shock of what we just witnessed. Randy Orton using a sledgehammer Followed by an RKO on that very hammer and knocking out Riddle. RK Bro is truly dead after tonight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, coming up next in our main event, it's the five man elimination challenge for the WWE Championship. Who is going to leave Extreme Rules in Seattle, Washington, holding the richest prize in the business today? They call it the richest prize in the history of the business, the WWE Championship of the World. And tonight, five men look to stake their claim at the top of the mountain with the gold in hand. AJ Styles, the former champion who lost the belt in a match of the year candidate at SummerSlam, looking to once again prove just how phenomenal he can be. Mustafa Ali, a man who has been rewriting his career for the better the last several months, there quite possibly isn't a man with more momentum right now than the heart and soul of Monday Night Raw. Austin Theory, a man who proclaims he is the future of the WWE, looking to prove himself correct by taking home the title. John Cena, looking to make history and become a 17-time world champion. The obstacle is huge, but the franchise has made a career out of overcoming roadblocks. The WWE Champion Edge completed a goal to once again hold a world championship in his career. At this stage, there may be no tougher man to beat than the Rated R Superstar. Five men are about to step inside one ring, four will fall, and only one will be the last man standing. And to the victor goes the spoils. 
The winner will leave the heart of Seattle, Washington with the claim of being the face of the WWE as its champion. Who will outlast the others and walk away with the very richest prize? Who will earn the bragging rights of being the last man standing? Who will survive? And who will be the one and only WWE Champion? It is main event time here in Seattle, Washington. Sunday night, August the 7th, 2022. WWE Extreme Rules. Five men will enter this matchup, but only one man will be the last man standing. And only that man will leave with the WWE Championship of the World. The following contest is a fatal five-way match and is for the WWE Championship. Introducing the challenger from Gainesville, Georgia, weighing in at 218 pounds, the Phenomenal AJ Styles. Back on April the 11th at Backlash, the Phenomenal AJ Styles dethroned the almighty Bobby Lashley for the WWE Championship. AJ went on to hold the gold for over two months until the Rated R Superstar Edge, announcing his cash in ahead of time, defeated AJ Styles in the main event of SummerSlam. And what was an absolute match of the year candidate? AJ Styles is back on the hunt, is back in the challenging position once again, and he wants the gold back around his waist. Will tonight be the night that the Phenomenal One is once again the Phenomenal Champion of the WWE? This man, the self-proclaimed future of the WWE, with no doubt his biggest opportunity in his career and the biggest match of his young career here tonight at Extreme Rules. From Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 220 pounds, Austin Theory. Austin Theory took on John Cena at SummerSlam in a losing effort. But ever since then, Austin Theory has been at the neck of John Cena. For Austin Theory, it's about proving that his words are correct. Truly being the face, or I shall say the future face of the WWE. Austin Theory getting this opportunity tonight and has proved his worth in recent history. A victory over Randy Orton on Monday Night Raw. Theory's been going at it with John Cena. Theory is in that main event competition, but can he get the job done here tonight. And man, what a what, what a shocking night it would be if Austin Theory somehow walks out of here, the WWE Champion. Or could it be this man winning the gold for the first time? From Chicago, Illinois, weighing in at 182 pounds, Mustafa Ali. There is such thing as momentum. And there's another thing called catching hot fire and riding it into the wind. And that is what Mustafa Ali has been doing, not just the last few weeks, but for the last several months. Several victories over Seth Rollins, the biggest coming at SummerSlam in a steel cage match. Just over the last couple of weeks on Monday Night Raw, Mustafa Ali owns a pinfall victory over Austin Theory. And this past week on Raw, definitely the biggest win of Mustafa Ali's career when he defeated the franchise John Cena. It was in the midst of chaos after Austin Theory attacked Cena before the matchup. Edge and AJ Styles were brawling around the arena during the main event, but in the end, the last laugh went to that man right there as Ali got his hand raised on Raw. And here comes the man who puts the title up in his first defense since winning the gold. It's the Rated R Superstar. But how is Edge's psyche coming after a loss to John Cena just 24 hours ago on Saturday night's main event? Edge has been riding a high, but his momentum went to a screeching halt last night. Can Edge rebound tonight, or will a string of bad luck continue for the Rated R Superstar? From Toronto, Ontario, Canada, weighing in at 249 pounds, he is the WWE. Champion, the Rated R Superstar. Edge. 
Ever since returning to the WWE after a short hiatus, Edge came back in the swing of things, winning Money in the Bank, announcing his cash in ahead of time, and dethroning AJ Styles at SummerSlam. He owned singles victories over Drew McIntyre and Damian Priest, a tag team win over Austin Theory and Amos alongside this man, John Cena. But again, just 24 hours ago, Edge and Cena went one-on-one -on, -one on the return of Saturday night's main event. The franchise got the best of them on that night. Will that be the same result when the gold is on the line? From West Newberry, Massachusetts, weighing in at 251 pounds, John Cena! You want to talk about big fight feel? You want to talk about big fight match? Look no further than the franchise John Cena and look no further than the five man standing before you tonight in your main event of Extreme Rules is an all-star cast of Hall of Famers, future stars, and everything in between. Austin Theory, Mustafa Ali, Edge, AJ Styles, and the franchise John Cena. And although Cena got the win over Edge last night, what is the condition of John Cena after not only competing just 24 hours ago, but participating in that matchup against Mustafa Ali this past week on Raw? Tensions have been riding high all week long regarding this WWE Championship matchup, but it's all going to come to a head, and something's got to give. Only one man can leave Seattle, Washington, and the main event of this pay-per-view with the richest prize in the business today. I'm amped up. The gold is on the line. It's time to show up and show out. Who's leaving with the gold? The bell has sounded and we are underway. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is a five-man matchup, but it is also a five-man elimination matchup. So four men are going to have to fall by way of pinfall or submission. And the last man standing will be leaving with the WWE Championship. No countouts, no disqualifications in such a match like this. There's going to be no excuses for anybody who comes up short. And of course, no excuses at all earned for the winner of this contest. There's going to lot so much writing on this contest. So many personal vendettas and issues. So much history between so many men in this matchup. You can talk about the legendary rivalries between John Cena and Edge. John Cena and AJ Styles. AJ Styles and Edge in recent history. You see Mustafa Ali and Austin Theory going at it. Those two men have seemingly keep crossing paths over the last number of months. Their stories continue to be intertwined. And Ali and Austin Theory, two of the future pieces, two of the now pieces of the WWE, keep following down that same road. So many issues in writing on this matchup between Austin Theory and John Cena. Mustafa Ali riding a super high right now. He comes crashing down by way of Austin Theory. This is going to be the inter interesting part of this contest. When the match starts to break down into a fatal four-way, a triple threat, or even one-on-ones. We could see double teams in this contest. So look at this. We got to call Cena getting his hands on Austin Theory for the first time. And you know Cena's been itching for that. Again, it was Austin Theory who'd lost to John Cena at SummerSlam, followed by another loss alongside Omos against Edge and John Cena on the Raw after SummerSlam. Ever since then, Austin Theory, things have really ticked into a new gear for him. It almost seems that the win over John Cena has come secondary to just putting Cena out of his hindsight for good. Theory's got a vendetta against John Cena. Cena, of course, wants retribution as well. Oh, wait a minute here. Look at this. Theory and Cena. Look at that tag team. I never thought I'd see the day. Oh, well, Theory, typical Theory turning his back, but Cena saw it coming. We were just talking about the issues between these two men. They double teamed, took out Edge. Cena saw it coming, though. Look at the strength of Theory with a power bomb to Cena. You mentioned the possible alliances that will occur in a match like this. The double team on a man. We're, we're on an odd number right now. If you double team a superstar in this contest, calls an elimination, get the numbers to trickle a little bit. It's a five man split when it comes to the odds of who's going to leave tonight with the WWE Championship. And again, this is Edge's first title defense since winning the championship for another time in his already legendary and already solidified Hall of Fame career. 
was one of Edge's biggest goals since coming out of retirement was to win the gold yet again. He accomplished that goal through winning the money in the bank and cashing it in successfully at SummerSlam. But a lot of credit goes to Edge. He could have easily taken advantage of the Money in the Bank briefcase and cashed in on AJ Styles or whoever the champ may have been on a weakened opponent. But Edge wanted to prove that he could not only win the WWE Championship again, but that he could defeat AJ Styles. Remember the two men met at WrestleMania, AJ got the better of Edge on that night, and that's why Edge disappeared for a couple of months, seemingly wanted to retrain, refine himself. Came out swinging in that Money in the Bank qualifier several months ago against Drew McIntyre, and that's kind of where things all started for Edge's climb to the top of the mountain in the WWE again. Edge taking down Cena there. You know Edge wants some payback after Cena knocked him off just last night on Saturday night's main event. And again, you got to wonder the percentage of those guys' wells being heading in here. But look at this, Edge and AJ Styles, one-on-one -on -one for the first time since SummerSlam. Those two men are in the ring by, by themselves alone. But as we were mentioning, Edge and John Cena, a grueling matchup just 24 hours ago on Saturday night's main event. Absolutely took each other to the limit. It was John Cena who got the best of Edge, caught him out of nowhere with the attitude adjustment. Defeated the WWE Champion, handing him his first loss in months. So you gotta wonder the psyche of Edge and, of course, the injury status of both men coming into this matchup. But what about AJ Styles? Remember, it was during that matchup with Cena and Ali this past week on Raw that a brawl broke out in the backstage area, seemingly spilling out to the WWE Universe. Wait a minute, Edge with the spear on Cena. Out of nowhere. And we have our first elimination of this contest. Just like that, snap of the fingers. Cena may have came in with momentum, but Edge caught him slipping, hit him with the spear. Cena is gone, the first casualty of our main event. Edge may be the second here, as Ali's got that Koji clutch in on the champion. Man, just like that, you didn't even see it coming. The chaos that is ensuing in the ring in this contest. Edge and John Cena going at it. And Edge getting back his win from 24 hours ago on Saturday night's main event. Cena may have beat Edge last night, but tonight Edge got the win where it matters most when the gold's on the line. And Cena's your first casualty. And we are now down to four men in this WWE Championship matchup. Oh, and AJ Styles, phenomenal forearm to Mustafa Ali. Meanwhile, Austin Theory into the cover on Ali. And oh, and Ali got the shoulder off. Man, what poetry that would have been if AJ did the damage and Austin Theory, of all people, snuck in to get the victory as Theory lays out Ali. Edge spears AJ at the same time. We're trying to keep up with the action the best we can. It's the nature of this five-man, or now four-man matchup. The absolute chaos that we are witnessing before our very eyes here tonight in Seattle. Ali down on the outside. We now have a three-man matchup at the current moment. Austin Theory stuck between a rock and the hard place. With Edge and AJ Styles in the ring, but Theory trying to hold his own. He's got AJ above his shoulders. Fireman's carry position. AJ with the snake guys. He's the corner. And AJ Styles goes down, at least momentarily. A nice DDT to Theory. Edge and AJ Styles. Look at this. They want to get at each other. AJ wants his win back from SummerSlam. Going for that calf crosser, but not watching his ring awareness there. Smart to take advantage while Edge was distracted, but unfortunately the rope saving Edge in this contest. Austin Theory's down. Mustafa Ali sneaks back into the ring, but is letting AJ Styles and Edge go out of here. We could have our second elimination. If Edge gets eliminated, we're guaranteed a new champion here tonight, but Edge gets the shoulder up. And we got AJ Styles and Mustafa Ali going at it. It's a one-on-one -on -one match we haven't seen in the midst of all this chaos. He's I'd say last number of weeks, but honestly, last number of months, all these men have really started to intertwine and lead us to the WWE Championship match we are seeing right now. I'd love to see AJ Styles and Mustafa Ali go one-on-one -on -one in the near future as AJ continuing his fight on edge and Mustafa Ali sidestepping the phenomenal one, now gonna go into the cover. Will we see our second elimination to join John Cena, but AJ gets the shoulder up. And man, what a surprise that is. John Cena of all guys in this matchup. And listen, we have a ring 
full of insanely credible and talented superstars. But I don't think anybody saw Cena going first. Meanwhile, Austin Theory, blockbuster to Edge. Edge springing up though. Smelled the sense of urgency. Blood in the water and takes out Theory. And meanwhile, Mustafa Ali, wait a minute, Mustafa Ali using AJ Styles' own maneuver on him. Styles clash. Imagine the poetry if AJ loses to this and AJ gets the shoulder up. That's a little bit of tasting your own medicine. AJ Styles, remember in recent history, remember all the way back to March and April when AJ was competing in that number one contenders tournament for the WWE Championship. One of the things that got him so far and led him to winning that matchup was using his own opponents against them. Mustafa Ali giving AJ a little taste of that here tonight. Meanwhile, AJ burning hammer. And Ali goes down. Meanwhile, Edge with a senton. The theory on the outside. Edge, or excuse me, AJ springboard. Going back into the ring. So much action to keep up with in this contest. And we're already down a man. And what a main event this has been. What a night this has been here at Extreme Rules. Edge and Theory continuing their brawl. Theory just eats the steel steps. And Edge and, or excuse me, AJ Styles and Mustafa Ali in the ring right now. Wait a minute. AJ's on the apron. I think we know what he's going for. Ali's dazed. AJ Styles, phenomenal four. No, he slipped up. Oh. Mustafa Ali got lucky there. AJ Styles slipped up on the top rope, but Ali couldn't take advantage. AJ Styles grabs a hold. Styles clash to Ali. AJ to the cover. Ali is gone. We have our second casualty of the contest. And that may be Mustafa Ali's first loss in a while, but credit to Ali. Nothing to be ashamed of tonight. That man has been on an absolute roll for months. One little bump in the road isn't going to be the last time I think Mustafa Ali is involved in the WWE title picture. Wait a minute. Edge. A spear on AJ Styles. And we're going to see our third elimination here. AJ's gonna go down. No, AJ gets the shoulder up. The move that put AJ Styles away at the biggest party of the summer back on June 26 is the move that he has obviously scouted and is able to survive here tonight. As we're down to three men in this contest, Theory, AJ, and the champion Edge. AJ's dazed, however. AJ caught in the execution. AJ may be knocked out cold. And he goes! Has been eliminated. AJ is gone, and we are down to two, and I can't believe I'm saying this right now, but the WWE Champion Edge and All Day Austin Theory, our final two in this elimination matchup. Man, I, am, I do not want to be in the arena if Austin Theory wins this matchup here tonight. The kid's got a ton of talent inside the ring, but the way he's been acting as of late, the attacks on John Cena, it'd surely be a son of a bitch if he leaves here with the WWE title, but I think Edge has something else in mind. May have just knocked his lights out. At the end of the day, credit where it's due. Theory hanging into these final moments in this matchup, and Edge dropping the elbow. Macho Man-esque on the challenger. Gonna look to finish this matchup here to retain the title, but Theory gets the shoulder up. John Cena eliminated first, Mustafa Ali going second, and Edge once again pinning AJ Styles' shoulders to the mat. And AJ Styles, your third elimination in this contest. We are down to two men. We started with five, we are down to two. Will it be end new or end still? As we are witnessing Theory and Edge right now, going at it, and Edge, they just knocked his lights out once more. And Edge is feeling it here in Seattle. I think Edge knows how talented Theory is, but I think Edge is confident that he's got this match where he wants it. And remember, Edge owns a pinfall victory over Theory on the roll after SummerSlam in that tag team matchup. It was Edge who speared the lights out of Austin Theory on that night and picked up the victory for himself and John Cena in that matchup against Theory and Omas. Edge whipping Theory off here. Theory's dazed in the corner as Edge is really taking control ever since the last elimination. Theory now grabbing a hold. Edge is dazed. Oh, wait a minute here. Wait a minute. Theory. Oh, no. Oh, no. Edge. Edge may be knocked out cold. Theory to the cover. 
Oh, man, Edge getting the shoulder up at the very last second. We almost had a new WWE champion. Man, I cannot, I cannot imagine Theory waving the flag of the WWE right now. Wait a minute. Blockbuster. Blockbuster. Oh, no, Edge shoots up. Edge dropping Theory with the knee. And Edge smells blood in the water. A sense of urge. Uh, wait a minute, Theory. Edge was going for a spear. Theory. Oh, my God, no. Theory's into the cover. No. Two, three. You have got to be kidding me. That son of a... Austin Theory is the WWE Champion? The hush that has come over Seattle. I I'm in shock. I'm at loss for words. You want to talk about taking advantage of a situation. Edge was beating the hell out of this man the last few minutes. But he survived and he's the champion of the WWE. I'm in shock. I am in absolute shock right now of the events we just witnessed. First Cena goes down, then Ali, then AJ Styles. Theory somehow survives. I cannot believe I just heard those words over the loudspeakers in this arena. That young son of a bitch, Austin Theory, just stole the WWE Championship, whether we like it or not. It is a new day in the WWE, and it is all day Austin Theory. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been an incredible night here at Extreme Rules. We thank you so much for joining us here tonight in Seattle, and Theory is your new WWE Champion. Thank you for tuning in. Good night, and we will see you on the next episode of Monday Night Raw. What a night. I am in shock. Face on when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back, I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat, gonna see me rise, you can hate on that, I don't play both sides, doing me no cap, I'm a rock.